everybody and welcome back again to Dragon Age Inquisition. As you can see, something is different. Yeah, I have completely new set of sword, shield and armor. Uh, since we found a few crafting recipes and, uh, um, well, weapons and armor schematics in the hinterlands, I decided to uh, try my hand at crafting again and, yeah, this is the result. <laughs> it, it's all a bit better than what I had before. I mean, the armor doesn't look as warm and comfy as my old armor, but um, I mean, at some point I would have replaced it anyway because it would have been too too weak compared to the new armor that I've been getting. So the shield is actually a lot better than what I had before. I think my old shield was like a 9 armor rating and this one is a 15? And yeah, I gave them cheesy names as well. So this one is called Ironheart because it's completely made from iron, obviously. And the sword is called Iron Bite. Um, yeah, I also made the same set of... Well, actually, Cassandra got a different shield. It has the same armor rating, but I thought, you know, give her some variety. She has the same the same sword, <laughs> which I called Pointy. Um, yeah, I, I kind of ran out of ideas there. <laughs> And she also has a new arm. I don't really have any other um, recipes or schematics so far, except for bows and daggers and two-handed weapons, so all the stuff that I don't need, basically. But um, I had some stuff for my for my uh, sword and shield warriors, so I went ahead and crafted something. And I like the shield. I also like the fact that it doesn't clip through my coat anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess um, we will use this one for a while. Anyway, in the last episode we uh, spent a bit of time talking to Cassandra and I'm sure she has actually more to say. So, yeah, let's talk to her again. It occurs to me I don't actually know much about you. <laughs> what do you want to know? I'm not sure. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny, this is the first time someone actually asks me a question like that. Yeah, you don't know. I thought you knew that. I suppose I could ask Liliana. She has collected a frightening amount of information <laughs> on you. But I don't want to ask her. I want to hear it from you. Alright. Well, why, why should I make something up? I mean, seriously. I was born in Ostwick, and that's where most of my family is. The Trevelyans, is it not? <laughs> a large clan with a rather clever <laughs> coat of arms. Oh, really? Tell me, do you consider the free march as your home? Are you eager to go back? Um... I hated it. Um, yeah, like I said, I think she isn't on the best of terms with her family. I think she was kind of happy to get out of there, to be honest. So... I guess she hated it. If I ever go back, it'll be too soon. <laughs> yes. I suppose I feel the same way about my own yeah. family. Alright, let's investigate. Uh, yeah, tell me about yourself. I'd like to get to know you better. You would? Is that <laughs> a problem? Not entirely. I'm just curious as to your motivation. Everybody is so suspicious. Oh! <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Let's 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 try this flight option as well. I hope it's not too blunt. Is there any harm in us becoming a little closer? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Slightly disapproves. As you wish. My name is Cassandra Pentecost, daughter of the Royal House of Navarra, seventy-eighth in line for the Navarran throne. I joined the Seekers of Truth <laughs> as a young woman, and was with the Order until they withdrew from the Chantry. I remained as the Divine's right hand, carrying out her order to form the Inquisition. And here we are. That's all there is to know, my lady. Alright, interesting. Um, so, you're Navarran royalty. You're a member of Navarra's royal family. The Pentagasts are a very large clan. Half of Cumberland could say the same. <laughs> really? No, but it feels that way. I have hundreds of relatives so distant they need charts to prove <laughs> we're related at all. 
And they have them. Oh, yes. The Pentagasts value their precious blood like it runs with gold. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you're not on good terms, I take it. So, not on very good terms with your family, then? I do not visit, if that's <laughs> what you mean. The Pentagasts are famed for dragon hunting, but few actually pursue the craft. Most are fat and lazy. Mm -hmm. They pay lip service to the Maker and care only for idle pleasures and past glories. My brother was all that kept me in Navarra. Once he was gone, so was I. Um, so what happened to your brother? Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to <laughs> speak of Antony. Another time, perhaps. All right, fair enough. Um, tell me about Navarra. You don't seem to like your homeland much. My family polluted it for me. <laughs> what little I saw of my homeland was through the bars of a gilded cage. My mm. uncle treated me like a porcelain doll to be placed on a shelf and dusted only when necessary. Thus, I did not see Navarra. The real Navarra until much later. By then, I realized I knew it not at all. Um, I actually think that you know, Freya can connect very well to Cassandra because I think they had similar experiences growing up uh, as nobility and not really liking that too much. So what about your parents? Your uncle? What about your parents? They had the misfortune of taking the wrong side <laughs> in the second attempt to overthrow King Marcus. The king executed them, but spared my brother and I since we were family and children at the time. Thus we were raised by my uncle. A mortalitasi who preferred the company of his corpses to mm. the living. What's a mortalitasi? Your uncle was a mortalitasi? A death mage. He still is. Mm. My countrymen do not burn the dead. They bury them in special crypts. The mortalitasi supervise the crypts, like priests. Uncle Vestalis oversees the grand necropolis. Nevarans spend more time honoring dead relatives than they do mm. with living ones. It is odd to be so fascinated with death and its trappings. I will never understand it. Um, alright, so you worked for the Divine. So you were the right hand to the Divine? To Divine Justinia, yes. And Divine Beatrix before her, in mm. fact. The position is normally reserved for Templars of the Knights Divine. But my circumstances were unusual. Unusual how? You don't know the story? <laughs> Thank the Maker. I will tell you if you wish, but it isn't as exciting as some drum it up to be. The short version is that I once saved the previous Divine's life. My reward was <laughs> becoming her right hand. So, Liliana is the left hand and you are the right hand? Interesting. So what is a right hand? But... What does a right hand do, exactly? <laughs> what is your hand capable of? It gives, it takes, it beckons. It <laughs> makes a fist. Liliana and I extended the Divine's reach beyond the Grand Cathedral. We went where she could not. After Beatrix, I was tired of the position and wanted to return to the Seekers. But Justinia convinced me to stay. Her vision for the future gave me hope. And apparently you believed in her. You thought she could really change things? Justinian knew the war was coming long before it began. She tried to avert it, but the forces arrayed against her were too strong. Sometimes you have to break a bone so it can be reset. Hmm. That's where the Inquisition comes in. It was to be the answer. A means to preserve as well as an agent for change. I only wish she had lived to see it. Uh, so, how did you become right hand? So, what's the story about you becoming the right hand? Sweet Andraste, do you really <laughs> want to hear that? It was, what, 18, 20 years ago? Some still discuss it like it happened yesterday. The tale gets bigger each time it's told. I barely recognize myself within it now. <laughs> I'm sure you're just being modest. <laughs> I was there. I think I know what happened. To hear others tell it, I alone saved Divine Beatrix from a horde of dragons sent to assault the Grand Cathedral. Rather impressive for such a young seeker, wouldn't you say? And the truth is? 
I stumbled upon a conspiracy to kill Beatrix. A Templar Knight Commander was at its heart, and there was a dragon battle at the Grand Cathedral, but I had help from loyal mages who rallied to the cause. They freed the dragons from magical control. Without them, the Divine and I would both have died. Yet I became the right hand, and they are forgotten. Hmm. I wonder how old she was when that happened, if it was like 20 years ago? <laughs> well, they really, they really bring out the flirt options here, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> You're delightful. <laughs> you know that. No. I do not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I object. There is nothing delightful about me. I beg to differ. <sighs> I think I preferred you in the stocks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's all for now. I'll let you get back to work. And talk do to you again. Do you need something? Um, maybe. Let's investigate again. Yeah, tell me about the Seekers. Um, actually... Uh, I bought recently that book, Asunder, which uh, is sort of a bridge between the two games, I've been told. I started to read it and I think it uh, also deals with the Seekers, but I haven't gotten really far. Um, I, I'll try to read it you know, on the side while playing this game because I don't know how much time I have to actually read it in, in, in one go before continuing to play. But yeah, let me... Let me uh, find out more about the Seekers. Can you tell me more about the Seekers? The Seekers of Truth were born from the original Inquisition long ago, when it united with the Chantry. Seekers stood above the Templars, watching over them but also investigating magical events they couldn't handle. We were meant to be incorruptible, <laughs> above reproach. How seldom does reality match the ideal? But what are Seekers? But what are Seekers exactly? Those who know anything of us think we are Templars. Hmm. We do not use Lyrium, however. Our abilities are different, as was our original purpose. We disciplined the Templars and were accountable only to the Divine. And not even her, truthfully. <laughs> so you let the Templars. So the Seekers commanded the Templars? No. The Order didn't assume command until after the Rebellion. The Templars have always feared us. When a Seeker arrived at a circle, they knew trouble was afoot. That kind of power is troubling. You begin to think you are the only one who can solve the world's problems. If you don't see a problem, it doesn't exist. If someone insists it does, they are the blind ones. Mm -hmm. um, so, could that be fixed? Do you think that kind of problem could ever be fixed? Possibly. Though the Seekers themselves would need to change. They were clearly not willing to, even though they abandoned everything they stood mm. for to avoid it. In my heart, I believe they can still be salvaged, but not by their own hands. Yeah, I mean, in the end, it's, it's again a problem of accountability. So if the Templars are accountable to the Seekers, that's fine, but the Seekers, they need to be accountable to someone as well, or they just, you know, get out of hand. And that is why you normally shouldn't give too much power into single hands, because then they are accountable to no one, and that will... I think it's inevitable that that actually corrupts people, so yeah. So, what abilities do you have? You mentioned that Seekers have different abilities than Templars. Entirely. A Templar's abilities come from Lyrium and are designed to hunt mages. Ours come from ritual and many years of dedicated training. We cannot be possessed by demons and are immune to mind control. Mm -hmm. Useful, considering our role. Seekers can gain other gifts, though that depends on the individual. And what are your gifts? What kind of gifts do you have? I can set the Lyrium within a person's <laughs> blood aflame. Both mages and Templars bend before my will. Some Seekers use it to interrogate, others simply to paralyze. Once there was a Seeker who could use it to hmm. kill. That particular gift is considered rare. So why did the Seekers rebel? Why did your order turn against the Chantry? 
We originally united with the Chantry through a treaty that stated they would keep mages under control. It was felt Most Holy had tacitly allowed the Circle of Magi to vote on its independence, thus breaking the treaty. The Seekers saw themselves as justified, and they led the Templars into a war of righteousness. But you disagree. You sound like you disagree. We knew what was happening at Kirkwall, where the Mage Rebellion began. We looked into reports of Knight Commander mm. Meredith's harsh treatment of her charges years earlier. But we found so many shocking cases of magical corruption, it was decided her actions were justified. If we'd been there when it happened, if we'd looked harder at the root causes... Hmm. Yeah, you seem to care deeply about it. You seem to care a great deal about it. Too much, if you ask the rest of my order. When faced with a problem, the Seekers would close ranks and crush it. We would find an answer, but only once we felt we weren't being coerced. The moment the mages voted for independence, our response was predictable. It was difficult to watch. All right, I see. And how do you become a Seeker? How does someone become a Seeker? Most Seekers begin training in their youth. I was much older, an exception due to my noble birth. We train rigorously for years. Our bodies and minds must be elastic to undergo the vigil, and most fail even then. Uh, what is the vigil? Is the vigil some kind of initiation? It is the rite every seeker must go through in order to summon their gifts. A full year of fasting, prayer, and separation from all distractions, including other people. We empty ourselves of all emotion, focusing only on the purity of our devotion. And the moment it finally ends, it's wonderful. Faith realized. Hmm. I cannot put it into words. <laughs> you were delirious. <laughs> so, was it some sort of magic? Was it some kind of magic? I don't fully understand it, to be honest. If the vigil was not so arduous, I'd say more should attempt it. <laughs> What if mages never needed to fear possession by demons? I'm told it is impossible, however. Hmm. I suppose I'll never know the truth of it now. All right, enough talk for now. I've no more questions. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there were a yes. few more questions. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's talk about the Chantry. May I ask you about the Chantry? It is difficult to say what becomes of the Chantry now. They have no Templars, no leadership, and no one left who is worthy of succeeding the Divine. It has fallen apart when everyone needs it the most. I ache to think what this will mean in the days to come. <laughs> hmm. Should the Chantry be saved? Hmm. Do you really believe the Chantry is worth preserving? If you ask my opinion, it is. Absolutely. Cast the Chantry aside and new problems replace old ones. We will have learned nothing from history. The people need stability, and the Chantry needs a new purpose. Andraste had a dream for us. It can still be achieved. And what new purpose would you think would be uh, advisable? So, what should this new purpose be? A dedication to what is truly important. Instead of building cathedrals and sewing gowns for the divine, the Chantry used to spend its coin feeding the poor. If we are to spread the Maker's word across the world, we must do so with open hearts and open hands. <laughs> yeah, you sound very idealistic indeed. That sounds rather idealistic of you. Does it? I do not think it's so unachievable. The Chantry has many good, honest people. They just need direction and inspiration. They need to be freed from centuries of adherence to tradition and ceremony. A chance for renewal is at our fingertips. It does not have to come with utter chaos. <laughs> Who is Chancellor Roderick? He, he is a jerk, I can tell you that much. Um, but yeah, tell me about him. What influence does Chancellor Roderick really wield? He's a bureaucrat, responsible for communicating the Divine's will to the rest of the Chantry. Therefore, He's accustomed to the clerics hanging on his every word, hoping his influence will benefit them. Despite that, Roderick is not a bad man. 
He's frightened and believes his place is to fill the gap left by Most Holy's death. Some might agree. As far down the chain of command as he is, there is no one left above him. Okay, I see. So, yeah, will he be a problem? How big a problem could he be? No more than he is already. <laughs> he sent his message to the College of Clerics. That is the only card he had to play. Dealing with him further only lends him credibility he doesn't deserve. All right, so basically you're saying don't feed the troll. I, I can get behind that. Um, so, will there be a new divine? Will the Chantry replace Divine Justinia? They will try. Once the priests withdraw for the Grand Consensus, it is against Chantry law for them to emerge without naming a new divine. Sometimes it takes days, or weeks, or even months. The problem now is that no clear successor to Justinia exists. <laughs> All worthy clerics died with her at the conclave. I see. And what if they don't agree? So what happens if they can't agree on someone? Theoretically, they will argue until exhaustion takes them or they see reason. Practically, however, if the grand consensus goes on too long, the Chantry will crumble. Any cleric with ambition but little sense will see this as her one chance, and plenty of such clerics exist. We shall see what happens. The Inquisition must act in the meantime. So, would you serve a new divine? If they do choose a new divine, will you serve her? That depends on whether she would have me. I am mm -hmm. a rebel now, remember? And even if she would, I do not know. It would depend on what type of divine she is. I am no longer in a position to follow blindly, and no new divine could expect mm. such obedience now. That is interesting. So why did you leave the Chantry? I'm surprised you rebelled against the Chantry. I left my own order when they took the wrong path. It is no different. But in neither case did I stop caring. Indeed, I care so much that I feel drastic action is necessary. I suppose history shall one day judge my <laughs> actions. All right, that's all for Thank now. Thank you. All right, I think we let Cassandra go back to her training exercise. And yeah, um, oh no, the special shipments quest marker has returned. I'm not going to check this now. I'm sure it's just trolling me again. So I'm actually going back My to the Chantry now. And yeah, I guess I'm Find going to start well the next main grace. mission. Touch me with fire I don't I think I need to do any sort of preparation for that. I have cleaned out my inventory before starting this episode, at least somewhat, you know. Um, yeah, I distributed some of my rings, although some of them are probably pointless at this point because my characters can't use them. I basically just gave them to my uh, companions so that they would get out of my inventory. And maybe I find somebody who can actually use it at some point, or I can give them the appropriate skill so that they become useful. Also, I have two charging bull rings now. I'm not sure if the effects are actually cumulative, but I mean, I don't have any other ring that I could put on, so I may as well use both of them. But yeah, let's let's head back to the Chantry and start the next main mission. There's still a little bit of time left in this episode. Upon his and, on and yeah, you keep you keep that guy busy. Very nice. <laughs> Alright, I need I need to go fire. to um I will take these injury Minev and Ah, Lady Trevelyan. May I have a moment? Uh Yeah, sure. Hang on a second, let me We can use that. Turn in the research. All right, that actually worked. Okay, Josephine, what do you want? Yes, Ambassador. I'd like to discuss your parents. Um. <laughs> I don't think that's what she means, Freya. But like I said, I'm I'm going to go a bit crazy with the flirt options for now until I'm I made up my mind. <laughs> so so let's use this. A little sudden, but it's time someone made an honest woman of me. <laughs> what? Very amusing. This is serious. Uh. I'd like to dispatch a courier asking the bands of House Trevelyan to align themselves with us. What are your thoughts? Should we approach your family for their formal hmm. support of the Inquisition? I'm not in their good graces. I'll do it. They trust me. They do politics, sadly. 
Not if it puts them in danger. Yes, they're very religious. Um, yeah, I guess she isn't in their good graces, as I have decided. But I also thought that maybe she already tried to reach out to them a little bit because um, she went to the conclave after all, which was a wish by her family. So she wouldn't completely rule out uh, asking them for support. Um, yeah, I guess I'll pick this. They adore politics, sadly. I guess this is one of the reasons why Freya isn't very close to them, because I don't think that she likes politics at all. The bands of Trevelyan never turn down a partner if there's something in it for them. <laughs> From the way my relatives scramble for status, you'd think we were all lesion. <laughs> that depends. How much do they like gold brocade? Valroyo has noted your lineage. It gives the Inquisition some legitimacy, although not so much as we uh. hoped. Why not? All right. You are from Ostwick. Our legion nobles consider the free marches... <laughs> quaint. All right, I get it. Um, yeah, I'd call us disorganized. Orle has a proper empire. Free marchers never unite until Darkspawn knock at their door. <laughs> no one doubts their ferocity when it happens. Free marchers are renowned for their tenacity. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I should thank you for your patience with the simple quarters. The accommodations in Haven are surely rough for someone of your birth. Well, I don't think she minds at all. Like I said, uh, I think she has been living a life that hasn't really been... Um, fit for someone of a noble birth, but more like the life of a mercenary, so I think she's completely fine with the accommodations. Yeah, how do you find it? This can't be what you're accustomed to, Ambassador. One adjusts. I stay busy. It helps take my mind from our surroundings. And the cold. And the wildlife. <laughs> and the lack of civilization for miles around. Uh. <sighs> Why anyone lived here before we found Andras's ashes, I cannot imagine. <laughs> Even is a freezing dump. Nah, nah, she's fine. She has, she has seen worth, I believe. Believe. Don't worry about me. Haven's more than livable. Really? If that is how you feel, I'm pleased to hear <laughs> it. Until next time, my lady. Yeah, Josephine. Josephine doesn't seem like somebody who would be very well suited for a place like this. Anyway, um, I, I still want to go and. At least have a look at the next main mission. So here we go. I think. Um, right, Josephine has returned with more money. Yeah, sure, I'll take it. Why not? And I'm just going to have send you had her any trouble with them? Not at all. I will inform you if that changes. Um, all right. I don't know who we're talking about, but <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that you don't have any troubles with whoever. So, um, yeah, this this is the next mission. Let's have a look at it. Address the Chantry in Val Royaume. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempts to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffed, and at this moment we could not step foot into the capital without being attacked by a mob or arrested. We must convince the Chantry to permit us entry into the city so we can show them the Herald of Andraste is not the monster they believe. Recommended levels 4 to 7. Um, I think I'm level 5, so I guess I'll be fine. Um, yeah, let's... let's Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. <laughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask her. Um. <laughs> yeah, uh. This may not actually help at all. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry <laughs> says. I will go with her. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? <laughs> right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. 
Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. All right, so I guess we're doing it anyway. Um, yeah, confirm operation. Um, yeah, let's let's do this. And go to Val Royo. Finally into Orle proper, I guess. And an achievement. Fate rifts are caused by weaknesses in the veil, disrupting a rift with your mark. Um, yeah. The city still mourns. <laughs> Just a guest seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. My Lady Herald! You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. Oh. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. Hmm. They wish to protect the people? From us? Uh, well, we expected this to happen, you right? Think the orders return to the oh. fold, maybe? To deal with us upstarts? I know, <laughs> Lord Seeker Lucius. I can't imagine him coming to the Chantry's defense. Not after all that's occurred. Return to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As <laughs> you say, my lady. I guess I didn't reply to that quickly enough. All right. So... Oh, this, this is, yeah, this is a completely new place. Hmm. But, uh, the episode is long enough, so I think I'm actually going to end the recording here. And in the next episode, we will go and explore this place a little bit. Valroyo main level. Um, I like how, you know, the fog in the air, this, this looks so amazing. Ah. Uh, yeah, anyway, let, let's end the episode here and... Yeah, next episode, we'll have a look around and see what's going on here. So, thank you for watching and see you again next time.